Hi, I'm Alistair, and this is part of a series of tutorial videos explaining how you can create an animatronic controller. Now, in the last video, I used a radio control transmitter, such as this one, and wired the receiver module to an Arduino so that a controller can enter up to six channels of input using the joysticks and the switches on the controller. Now, in this video, what I want to look at is the output side of things. And for an animatronic project, that typically means servo motors. So I've got uh, eight different servo motors arranged on the board here. And if I just turn my controller on, what you'll see is that as I move this stick up and down, the servos at the top there are rotating in opposite directions. If I move this one, you'll see the one in the middle go left and right. And I've got the channel here mapped to the two blue controllers. Uh, this one goes to the little hobby motor there. And I've got my two dials at the top here controlling the largest servos in the middle there. So these servos differ in size and weight and obviously in their power as well. So the amount of torque they can generate and therefore the amount of mechanical strain they're able to control. But other than that, they all work in essentially the same way. They have a 5 volt input on the red line they have a ground on the brown or black line, and then they have a signal line on the yellow line. And depending on the uh, duration of a pulse that is sent down that signal line, these servos can all rotate to a specific angle between naught and 180 degrees. Now, it is possible to uh, control that signal line directly from the GPI pins on an Arduino. But if you're creating a sort of a complex animatronic project that has um, eyes and mouth and, and lots of different movement, you'll run out of pins quite quickly. So what I'm using here is I'm using a, a little PWM controller board. This is a PCA9685. And all of my servos are wired into the pins here. This can control up to 16 servos but you can actually daisy chain these modules together to create, um, I think, up to about 995 different servos you can control. So very extendable. But the main thing is that its connection to the Arduino actually only uses four wires. No matter how many servos you're con controlling, this is an I2C connection, so it just has a ground, five volts, and a data and a clock line. So uh, that's what this component here is. Let me just turn that off. Uh, the other thing to note is that I've got a separate power supply up here. So this is a 5 volt power supply, uh, which is also going into the controller board here. Servos can draw a reasonable amount of current when they're operating. So you wouldn't really want to run them directly off the 5 volt regulator on the Arduino. Have a separate power supply for them, just as you would if you were powering a, a lot of LED light strips or something like that. They'd want a separate power unit. The control signal is sent from the Arduino but the actual power is coming from here. So here's how the components are wired together. As in my last video, I've got my Arduino wired to the six channel receiver with each of these signal lines from the channels going to a separate digital pin from two to seven. It's also got a ground connection and a five volt connection. And those are shared between all of the channels. You only need to put that in once. I've also got now a ground line going to this is the PCA9685 controller board. So this is what's going to control the power to the servo motors. And that also has a 5 volt supply. Now the 5 volt supply that's coming in here is just the reference voltage that's going to be used to interpret the signal that says to what angle to move all the servo motors to. The actual power that's going to be used to move the motors is going to come from this separate DC supply at the top here. So this is also 5 volts, um, but this is actually going to be used to power the servo motors, whereas this one here is sort of the control voltage. And then there are two signal lines. So like I say, this is an I2C or I2C squared connection into integrated circuit boards and those always use pins A4 and A5 on the Arduino. So it gives you two less analog pins to use, but in return you can, can control 16 servos. So it seems a pretty good swap. So we've got pin A5 on the Arduino. That's connected to the clock line, often marked SCL, 
and pin A4, that's connected to the data line, which is SDA. Uh, and it's a single data line, so it's bidirectional, and this is just the synchronization on the clock line. And that's it. You can add as many servos as you want to each of the additional channels at the bottom here, up to 16. And I would say there's a row of pins at the side here because it is possible to daisy chain several of these controllers together to control even more servos. But for now, I'm just going to uh, use a single board wired like this. So here's the Arduino code I'm running, and it's based on the same code as I demonstrated in the previous video. Uh, so I'll just go through the changes I've made to incorporate the outputs to the servo motor controller. So the first thing is I'm making use of a library, which you can download from this link here and uh, include it in your code using the following line. Um, so this library is just going to mean that it's easier to address, rather than each servo individually, what we can do is assign an array of all the servos and the values that we want them to have, and then we send that to the controller using the functions from this library, and that will uh, send the correct pulse values to move the surveys. Uh, so it just makes it more convenient, really. Um, before we specified the input channels, I've added a new constant here of the number of output channels that we're going to control as well. So like I say, each uh, PCAA9685 module has 16 channels, and I'm using a single module, so I'm going to create an array that holds values for all 16 channels. Uh, if you don't actually have servos connected to all of those channels, it doesn't matter. Um, you'll be sending uh, a value which sort of doesn't get used for anything, but it doesn't really make any difference. Um, it's worth mentioning that obviously we've there's no need for a one-to-one -one mapping between input and output channels. Um, we've only got six input channels here. But if we had six output channels and it was a simple correspondence between input and output, there wouldn't really be any need for an Arduino in the first place. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to apply some logic that will perhaps combine various input channels or do some calculations to determine how the output channels are going to be set. One obvious example of that is uh, an animatronic model that has some degree of symmetry, for example. Um, let's say you have a face and one of the input channels controls how much that face is smiling. Well, the output servos that a smile might need to um, adjust would be the degree of angle of the mouth on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, and perhaps raise the eyebrows or change the angle of the eyes. So there might be you know, six or eight different servo motors that are output channels which can get controlled based on a single input value which is the, the amount of smiling that you want to incorporate. Uh, so I'm using 16 here. And then in the global variables section I've created another array which is going to hold uh, the int value of each of the servo outputs. Uh, we'll create a global object which is going to enable us to address the controller for the servos. And there's another object that we're going to use from that same library as well. This is kind of a helper object that's going to convert from an angular value, so uh, in the range minus 90 to 90, let's say, into the corresponding PWM pulse that's going to need to be sent to uh, get the servo to go to that angle. So we'll just create an object that's going to be just a helper function we'll use right at the end here as well. Uh, in the setup function, so the, the setup regarding the output is in this section here. Um, so like I said, we're using an I2C interface and that uses the wire library that comes with Arduino. So we'll begin an I2C interface to start with and we'll specify the board rate we're going to use. We'll use 400 kilohertz board rate, uh, so 400,000 there. And then so that initializes the uh, I2C interface. Then we'll actually initialize the PWM controller itself. So we'll reset any devices that might be connected and initialize them. And we'll also specify the frequency. So uh, this controller doesn't actually have to control servos. It can send PWM pulses uh, to a variety of devices. Um, but servos, the timing window which the uh, pulse signal is sent in is 20 milliseconds long by, by standard across all servos I've ever encountered. So that corresponds to 50 hertz. So we'll, we'll set the PWM frequency here of 50 hertz 
um, which will give the correct timing window to, to set the PWM pulse for the position of the servo motors. So you shouldn't need to change that. And then in the main loop, um, so before what we were doing was just grabbing the input channels. And what we'll now do is based on the value that we capture in this channel input array, we'll set the different channel output values. So I've got my different servo motors that have been connected on each of the pins uh, of the servo controller. And then I'm going to work out how am I going to set the, the value based on the input. So I've, I've given just a couple of simple examples here. I'll make some more complicated behavior in the next video. But remember that the input value on each of the channels was an integer ranging between 1000 and 2000. So for the joystick inputs, 1500 was about when the joystick was centered, uh, 2000 is when it's pushed all the way up or all the way to the right, and 1000 is when it's all the way to the left or all the way to the bottom. And what this map function here will do is it will take the channel input, which was provided with an input range between 1000 to 2000, and in this first line what we'll do is we'll convert that to a value between minus 90 and 90 instead. So it's like a kind of a rescaling function to say take an input that was in this range and make it into an output that is in this range instead and then we'll assign it to the servo that's connected to the first channel output. Um, for the next two examples, so here's a pair of values here they're both using channel input 1, so they're both assigned to the same channel input. But note the difference here. This one is taking the input scale and assigning it from minus 90 to 90. This one is taking the same input scale, but this time we're going from 90 to minus 90. So it's reversing or mirroring uh, the behavior of the server above it. So these two servers are going to, when this one moves, anti-clockwise by a certain amount, this one is going to move clockwise by the same amount and vice versa. Uh, the next example here, so this time we've constrained the output values somewhat so we're still taking the exact same range of input values but this time we're going to map them to a smaller range of output values so this servo at most will rotate between minus 45 and 45. And so uh, those are the examples there. And you can create more complicated rules. We'll look at more complicated rules in later videos. But um, that gives you an idea of how you can set uh, an array of output values based on an array of input values and some simple rules. Um, we'll simply dump the outputs to the serial monitor as before just to help with debugging. And then finally, what we did in this section here was, was assign the values in an array what we now need to do is actually send that array of values to the servo controller. So that's what we'll do in this last little section at the bottom here. So we'll loop over all of the output channels. We'll call that helper function. Remember I said the PWM server is a helper library. So this function here, PWM for angle, will take the angle that we want for this channel which was calculated by the range here based on the input. So we'll take that angle, which is in degrees, we'll convert it to the corresponding PWM pulse value instead, and then we will set that to the channel on the uh, servo controller for that servo. So that's what this line here does. We'll take the desired angular output, convert it into a PWM value, and then assign that to the corresponding channel on the PWM controller. And that's it.